Welcome back to Agenda. I'm Paul Cook. The topic is human rights issues in the workplace. We're talking to Stephen Hammond, author of Managing Human Rights at Work, 101 Practical Tips to Prevent Human Rights Disasters. One of your tips is to focus on heritage instead of color. And you use an incredible example of talking to an African-American friend of yours, and you're saying, you know, what's the big deal between saying black and, and African-American? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. I said, what's the big deal about calling black people black? And he said, go to the dictionary. You look up white, you look up black. And I, I did. I, I saw white, and it was talking about, you know, plumage and swans and purity and, and all these things that are wonderful. And then I looked up black, and it talked about evil. It talked about black humor. It said, when you know, blacklist and, and when you're in someone's black books and, and all these negative things. And I got it. That was, that was the best example for me. That while there are exceptions, by yeah. the way, even in the dictionary or other places, that we tend to use black in negative terms and white in positive terms. And that was the clue as to why, especially in the United States, a number of African American leaders said, let's start referring to people by their heritage as opposed to their color of skin. And there's nothing wrong with still referring to people as black in Canada. We refer to people as um, either African Canadians or black Canadians. So people are still doing it, but it's just when someone actually actually says, I would like this as a reference to a group I'm, I'm, I'm part of, then we need to listen to that because it's not just out of the blue, there's actually good reasons for no, it. No, it, it was one of the big eye poppers in the book for me, I have to admit, and so much so that I almost want to look at the list now and go through it, what, what you actually wrote in here. Yeah, under sure, white. go ahead. White, the color of milk, fresh snow, common salt or a swan's plumage, innocent, unstained, of harmless kind, white-haired or white-headed boy, highly favored person, white hands, innocent of integrity or integrity. White hope, person who is expected to attain renown. White man, person of honorable character and good breeding. And then you get to black. Of hands, clothes, dirty, deadly, sinister, wicked, hateful, black-hearted, black in gratitude, not so black as one is painted, better than one's reputation, dismal, black despair, angry, sulky, threatening, black looks, implying disgrace or condemnation, presenting tragedy or bitter reality in comic turns, black comedy, humor, joke, of goods, etc., not to be handled by workers on strike, contravening economic regulations, black market. It's astonishing. It is astonishing, and once again, we, we, you know, we have to be careful this, when, when people are okay with making references to black, that's fine. But it's really important for those of us who are not black, uh, those of us who are not uh, black Canadians, um, that when someone actually says, I want you to use some other terminology and there's a reason for it, then we need to listen to it. Because until you or I went to those examples, we sort of think, oh, well, you know, what is this? Is this political correctness? I can't keep up. That's usually what most people sure. say. And so I just say, be more considerate. Listen to the things that people are saying. And if it's no skin off your nose, then just accede to the kind of simple things that people are asking what for. What about unreasonable demands? And I think you talked about one in the book when you talked about lesbian versus dyke. Oh, well, that was only because, that was only because in Vancouver there was a, um, a representative for the police who was talking to the media, and when she talked, she was at a gay and lesbian event. And when she said, you know, the Vancouver police want to make sure they're working with the gay and lesbian community, she said she got lambasted by a couple women afterwards saying they wanted her to use the word dyke. And I said, look, there's an, they, so the, I was doing some work with the Vancouver Police Department. And they called me and they said, what do you think about this? I said, I think you're very safe to continue to say gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered. And so just because a few people might want something that's very specific for them, well, if that's the conversation you want to have with them, that's okay. But that doesn't mean that everyone is going to be as accepting about using the term dyke in regular language. Okay, so the best bet here, I guess, is to do your homework when somebody's making a request go out there and find out what the reality is. In some yes, that, that is. And, and sometimes people are confused at exactly what you have to do. One of the things on my website, um, stephenhammond.ca, is I have a quiz of, of 20 different things for people in workplaces. And if you fill that out, it'll give you sort of a rating on where you're going, because lots of times people don't know exactly um, all the different angles. And then you find out whether you need to do more homework. The other thing that you bring up is the whole issue of common sense. I mean, you talked about, I think, a company that basically forced some guy to put poinsettias in the display window even though he, it was against his religious uh, beliefs that you know, he'd, he'd do something that had anything to do with Christmas yeah. and it took all of like 20 seconds to do the task that he was ordered to do. 
10 seconds. Ray Jones worked at the Shoppers Drug Mart in Victoria, worked there for 16 years, never had to put out Christmas decorations. And then they decided to go to a new system where during the day people, they would have a party at night and he never had to do that. And then during the day everyone would just sort of chip in and, and do this. And so suddenly after 16 years he was being asked to do this and he did one, he said he felt sick, horrible, because he's a Jehovah's Witness, not supposed to be promoting Christmas. And then they asked him to do something else and he didn't. And then this one, he just said don't go there and it was the point poinsettias, these six artificial poinsettias. And eventually his boss, Darn, Don Hardy, his supervisor, did it. And then they had a discussion with him saying, you got to do these things. And he said, I'm not going to do this. And so eventually he left. And it was headlines across Canada, national headlines that people use as an example. When he got $30,000 plus, most of it was wrongful dismissal though. Like most of it was, you're doing a job that you never had to do. And so suddenly you, you had to do this. So that was where most of the, the amount came from that the guy had to be paid out for pain lieu of notice. But it is still today used as examples by politicians and journalists as here is something that has gone too far. And so I asked the owner, Harold Eisler, I said, you know, what do you think is more bizarre, that you spent all this money and all this time and you lost a good employee, or that you could find someone else to do this for 10 seconds? Astonishing case, really, isn't it? Yeah, and, and the thing about human rights is that, that that's what we have to get over, is that things that we're not used to, we thought, like, who couldn't put out these poinsettias, for goodness sake? We have to remember it's not necessarily what's important for us, but someone else. So how do we make those adjustments? Okay, where are we heading with all this now? I mean, you look at the, the, the younger people coming into the world, workplace, do you think things are going to get better or are we going to be uh, taking a bit of a perilous journey here? Well, actually, where we're heading is, according to the last census, the fastest growing religious groups are Muslims, Sikhs, uh, Buddhists, and Hindus. And, and, and I got to put in perspective, it's still like from half a percent to a percent or a percent to, to two percent, so it's not as large. But what you're finding is with immigration patterns into Canada, more and more people are just saying, wait a second, these are rights that I have and so I can assert them. So you might have where you think, gee, you've only got one person in the community who, sorry, in your workplace who's Muslim, and so I don't have to worry about it. If that person is saying, I want an accommodation, or someone who is Jewish that says, I want to make sure I get Yom Kippur off, then you've got to listen to this. More people are knowing their rights, asserting their rights, which they have every right to do, and therefore it's up to us in the workplace to just find out about those rights. And it, by the way, if you do, you will have more people who are loyal, you'll have more people who want to hang around uh, because you're willing to accommodate those differences, and it'll be a better workplace. It's just good business, too. It is good business, and especially with the immigration patterns that we've got coming in, that the people aren't looking like you and I, and, and so, and, and there's going to be a lot, there are a lot of differences, there's going to be more, and so if you're, if you want to keep up with the times, then you got to understand the differences that people are demanding. Thank you very much for your time. It's my pleasure. We're speaking with Stephen Hammond, author of Managing Human Rights at Work, 101 Practical Tips to Prevent Human Rights Disasters.